So how do we ensure that religious freedom safeguards the conscience and convictions of all, but restrains the impulse of some to become the enforcers of God's will on earth? How can we help religion to be a tonic and not a toxin in our body politic? I'd like to suggest a few answers. James Madison, the father of the Constitution, believed that religious pluralism was essential to protecting our civic rights. And if we can accept the need for this pluralism, this multiplicity of religious voices and religious faith communities, it is a powerful, powerful antidote to the dangers of absolutism. Voltaire said, with typical Voltairean insight, when there is only one religion, tyranny rules. When there are two, religious war reigns. When there are many, liberty comes. Second, when we speak about defending freedom of religion, we must conceptualize it not only in terms of protecting people's right to have their beliefs and to exercise their beliefs, but also their right to access the public square where ideas are exchanged and debated on the basis of equality and respect. Protecting religious freedom must mean defending the public arena itself. Our duty is to defend not just the players on the field, but the turf as well. Third, we have to acknowledge that while broad accommodation should and indeed must under our Constitution be made for the legitimate demands that faith imposes on its adherents, sometimes religious practice will have to conform to our earthly laws and standards of justice, not because we place man's law above God's, but because we have the civic humility to recognize our own inadequacy in knowing how God would have his laws applied.